Hello, everybody. Now that we've gotten through the fundamentals of using variables, forms, numbers, strings, conditions and loops, and arrays, we can focus on what it's like to create an actual web application. So what we're going to do in Chapter 8 is, of course, look through the book code, but then extend upon it. So in this chapter, we cover creating templates, um, and we'll go through uh, Larry's book code. Uh, then we'll start using external files, constants, working with date and time, handling PHP forms with, with, with uh, variables, making forms sticky, which is an important point, sending email, output buffering, and manipulating HTTP headers. So this is an important chapter as it connects the simple programmatic concepts with how we can actually make products. So let's dive in. Um, read this chapter, and if you haven't yet, and then uh, come back to this video right at this point. So what I'm going to do now is go right through the book code. And I'm going to, um, I've got everything in math. The book code this week is a little bit chaotic, but there's an important uh, part of this. And that is, I'm going to go to localhost real quick. Um, and it looks like I have a, an issue with the turning on map. So we'll get that started. Um, but it goes through the template and the logic of using what's called an include. And those includes you're going to find have um, a lot of PHP in them. So if you take a look at this folder, this is the chapter eight folder, and it'll be zipped and applied with this, this video. But there are a lot of scripts that have HTML extensions. Now, as you know, a PHP site, if you want PHP to be parsed, you need to have a PHP extension. Well, that's usually true. We can always tell the server to parse PHP in files that have an HTML extension. So um, when we look at this, we'll see an index.php, and you'll see that it includes templates slash header.html and templates dash slash footer.html. Now, if those HTML documents have PHP in them, will they parse with that HTML extension? Well, when we include them, yes, they will. But for now, if we look at the original template, this is the template we're looking at. What we want to do is turn this into a PHP uh, website. So I'm going to go to template.html. And you'll see it's the same exact script as what you see when we log into the index, which is this right here. Identical. And this is template.html, and you'll see uh, begin changeable content and changeable content, meaning you've got a main container where we can put different things in there. Everything else is consistent throughout the whole site. You've got your header. You've got your navigation. You've got your footer. Now, the beauty of this, by having one little template for each of these elements, is that if we want to change something, it will change site-wide. And that's why the PHP site is much more easy to manage. If I want to change a navigation item, I want to add something. I would simply go into the navigation and add it. And because it's going to be included site-wide, it would include everywhere. One change, the entire site. Beautiful thing. So this is template.html. This is index.php, which uses external files. So let's go back to our, our um, Sublime here. And we want to look at the index and what exactly happened. OK, so we know that index and template are identical, except for the fact that we have this. It reads include templates slash header dot HTML. OK, cool. So let's look at templates. And let's look at header dot HTML. And this is that top element, okay, which is kind of neat. But the beauty of this is I can easily go into this and echo high class like this and just close it out. Whoops. Save it. And then when we go back to our index, let me make sure I have the, uh, 
the good old cache going here because there it says high class and that was the, the a cache issue as always um, so that proves that PHP can be inside an HTML file that has been included on the home page. Okay. So as we work, now we can start to change things and really utilize PHP and what it does. So we see all these folders with, you know, chapter eight, part six, seven, 11, and 12. We see a login for 13 and a register for 10. All very cool stuff, but we also see down here a top level register, a top level welcome, uh, a script called books. Um, all these things can be included wherever we want to include them. Okay, so we've got our footer and our header right here. Let's go ahead to the next element and take a good look at this is uh, script H2, the header. And we have ahrefbooks.php. So if we do ahrefbooks.php, um, we have um, a list of the books with that section. So let's go ahead and click that link where it says books. And these are the books that we just read. Now notice I still have my, uh, my footer. I have my header with the nav. And then I have my message of high class that was in HTML header right there. So I'm going to delete that so we we look good and to give you an idea of what we're doing. Right. So in this website, I have a template. I could even create a template uh, called template.php that has nothing more than this. I could do something like this where I do a new file save this put the this right here and this could be called template.php and then we could define the title for every page so this could be something like contact us All right and then in the templates we would have in the title the contact us and then we could leave this open leave open for new content maybe database content as we get through this course because we'll be doing using databases very shortly so leave open for new content maybe database course that um database content excuse me um so that covers our header our footer which is eight three next we can go in and do some other things uh, I'm looking for, there's 8.5. Let's look for this new header. So this new header is the sixth script in our, in our book. And what this does is define the title. It says basically, if defined title, then print the title. Otherwise, the title is not defined. And you can print, raise the high roof beam, a JD. That's the, the default title for the entire site. So if we go back to our header.html or go back to our books.php, here we have our defined title. So because this is all in a PHP extension because it's been included, the variable or constant title, which equals books by JD Salinger, would be parsed within the header.html because it's included in the books.php. Very cool thing here. Now when we go look at our footer, look at this. We can put the time zone into that. So what I'm going to do now is in, in my index, I'm going to include templates and I'm going to do uh, script 0806 header.html. And then I'm going to do templates script 0807. Oh, it's underscore 08. 07 slash footer.html. So these this header and this footer would now be visible on my index, which I'm going to go ahead and, and do right now. So there's index. Notice how it says 230 Friday, March 17th. That's the date at the bottom. And notice how the title here says raise high the roof beam at JD Salinger fan club. So if I go to books now, 
Now books has raised high the roof beam. So our header right here for 06 uh, has a defined title. Now if, if our books has that, then we would say books by J.D. Salinger. So let's go to, to, let me look for the title here. And it doesn't, which means we have to go to our books and change that title to the um, script 08. These, these file names can get kind of uh, tricky. And then I can do templates 07 footer. And now when I go to books and I hit the, it should have the, again, this is a, another uh, cache issue because we know books is pulling from, there we go, books by J.D. Salinger. If you remember in the last lesson, lesson seven, I had pairs of variables that cleared the cache by using a unique get method. That's how we're clearing the cache right now. And then once again, we get our time. So that is uh, scripts six and seven, title and date. Let's take another quick look at the, the footer here for date. This is the date object and its uh, formatting is just this. So this is hours and minutes, uh, month, day, year. So this is, uh, uh, you see, uh, month, it's, it's actually day of the week, month, and then the day. So if you were to go to php.net and look for the date object, you would see the formatting on the panel. So down here, you can see, I know there's a cheat sheet down here. Um, there we go. This tells you all the dates that you want. So like we did March 17th, they're doing March 10th. And yes, this has been around forever, the date object, since 1997 when the first versions of PHP were released. But now we're adding PHP to our includes and it makes it always look updated, which is a great thing. So next on our docket is to look at scripts uh, for the register 10. And this is going to be uh, register.php. And I'll go ahead and go to that value. It's script underscore 08 underscore 10. And this is the register. And this is going to um, post with post method with register.php. Remember, the post method does not cache values. And we have a lot of private things in this form, so we're going to want to maintain the post method instead of the get method. And you'll notice that register.php goes to the same script. So I'm including templates header.html, which, by the way, is not, uh, is not in that folder. So we'll use the one that's on the root, and that'll be called simply... 08 register.php so you can see the style so we've got our nav we've got our bottom footer this takes the top top level header and the top level level nav and now we have a nice form we can go ahead and test it and then we'll go through the code i'll just do test for the password and then we'll register you are not registered. Okay, you are not really registered, but, and that's because it's not going into a database. But let's take a good look at the code. What we're using is the form validations that we have done for um, the previous few chapters. And we're pointing the data to the same script. But this is an example of sticky, fo sticky forms. In other words, if we have a problem with the form, we can replace all the values by saying, okay, if is set post first name, let's output that inside the value attribute of the first name. So let's give you a, uh, uh, an example of that. We're going to do um, Chris Secor, and we're going to hit register. And you see how Chris Secor stays in the form field? That's because it was set, and so we put it as the value attribute. And that's how we can use sticky forms. And notice in each input type, 
we have a condition of is set, and then we're outputting the HTML characters inside the text field. So we're doing it for each and every input type, so that if something gets verified as false, we still don't make the user type in their data over and over again. And that's a beautiful thing about sending the data to the same script. It helps us to um, uh, validate and, and use sticky forms. We could send it to a separate script and keep the form there, but we need that data if we want to keep values in our HTML. I hope that makes sense, but that's an example of sticky forms. Now, the next thing we're going to do is see what else we can do with output buffering. So this is script 11, and um, what output buffering does is it allows us to pit, send multiple headers to um, to a, uh, a script. And when we go to output buffering and what output buffering is, um, when we pass like a title tag or a head tag or something like that, some servers are set to trick off an error. So what we have to do is accommodate our servers by turning on the output buffering and allowing these headers to come through again repetitiously. So what we've done here is turn on output buffering, but when we turn it on, we have to turn it off. That's why in script 812, you'll see that we ob end flush. And that sends the buffer to the browser to turn off the, the buffering. You can also turn off uh, output buffering on the server in general. I like this method because it allows us to keep all content in the same script. And it allows us to, to function with passing as much data as possible to our registration. Now, in reality, what we would normally do with this kind of thing, and I'm going back to the register to show this, is this after this validation had cleared, what we would do is have this go into a database. Data goes into a database. Okay, so that's that's output buffering. Um, and lastly, we have a login. So I wanna show you the, the entry part of logins. Uh, ordinarily, these credentials would be inside a database. But right now we've had to make them static because we haven't learned how to deal with that with a database, but we certainly will in a, in a few weeks. So my email is me at example.com and this password is pass. So right here, I'm gonna go to my login and if I'm registered, hypothetically, and I'm going to do me at example.com. I believe that was the was the username and password, yep, and the, the pass is test passed. So what happens when this happens is it evaluates. You are logged in, now you can blah, blah, blah. So when we learn sessions in chapter nine, this is where this can start to take effect because what will happen is we will set a session saying that this person is okay to be logged in, okay? So let's take a look at the code. We are gonna revisit this, so I'm gonna kinda just go through it. Um, when we get to the end of the course and we start building uh, like a membership system, anything that, you know, uh, would show good uh, mastery of PHP, we would definitely use a database and sessions with this. So right now we just have our login, we have our password, and we want it to be input type password so people don't see it. And then what happens is if we post that method, we have our validation here, if empty post email or post password. Um, if the string to lower post email equals me at example.com and also password equals test pass, we know we're good. Otherwise, we're incorrect. So that is where we, we would set our session right here. Set session. And I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but next week, week nine, uh, is the time where we're going to be doing all the session stuff so that we can set a token. Remember that the user's properly, log, properly logged in. When they click log out, we can properly log them out and then we'll kill our session. And then after that, we'll get into databases and how we can store usernames and passwords properly. Okay, so that is the chapter eight book code.